and we're live. Hello, Yay. hello, everybody. This is Cody, Captain of the Nostalgic Nebula here at the beautiful Frida Cinema. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Saturday, August the 1st. It is the first day of International Clowns Week, and uh, we're going to be doing a special YouTube watch party of the film Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We have the cast here with us. Now, this uh, special YouTube watch party is in benefit of our favorite nonprofit, the Frida Cinema. It's our home base of operations when we do events during normal times when you would go to the movie cinema. Uh, you won't find a uh, more diverse and welcoming uh, community of people who love film. You won't find better programming from indie to foreign uh, to some of the best films like Killer Clowns on the from Outer Space. We had a really cool screening here a couple of years ago. The Horrible Imaginings Film Festival did a screening. We had John Masari here. And uh, here are our other guests joining us uh, this evening. We have creators of the film. We have Steven Chiodo. We have Edward. We have uh, Charles Chiodo. We have Suzanne Snyder. We have Grant Kramer. Uh, we might be having some other special guests joining uh, pretty soon as the movie is going on. Uh, but right now, you're going to want to queue up your own copy of the movie. So we're going to be playing the movie and doing basically live commentary to it. And you'll get to hear some great behind the scenes stories and listen as we all banter and talk back and forth. So just get your copy ready. You can find it on YouTube and Netflix. And we'll count down, you know, three, two, one, press play. But before we get to that, just remember, uh, this is in benefit of the Frida Cinema. So if you have the means, please go down to the info box down there. Go to the link and donate to the Frida Cinema. They are a nonprofit, and we want to keep them running as long as possible. They are currently doing a fun pop-up series of drive-in movies. So go ahead and go to their website, fridacinema.org. You'll find out what they have coming up next. Um, so let's just uh, get the conversation going You know, before we get to the movie. Uh, Stephen, uh, Charles Edward, how did this uh, project come to be? How did this get started, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Friday night's just started. Oh, Friday night's just started. <clears throat> well, you know what? I was sitting around one day trying to imagine what was the most frightening image I could think of. And I imagined a scene where I was driving down a lonely mountain road and a car pulls up next to me, trying to pass me. And when I look to see who's driving, I see a clown, a horrible clown being in a place where he shouldn't be. To me, that was really frightening. And then we started brainstorming from there and came up with killer clowns from outer space. Yeah, the, the, the conversation was, you know, like, well, what if it wasn't in a car? Well, then they'd have to be from outer space. Mm. You know? So it's something, it's something as silly as that, just so one idea bounces off of another and you come up with something that 30 years later is a cult classic. Right. So, yeah, I mean, again, we haven't started the movie yet. I no, think no, someone's yeah, playing the movie. Oh wait yeah. a minute! I'm 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 already into the movie here. I'm okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. No no no. You don't have to start the movie yet. We'll we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, rewind to the beginning. And if you can turn it down just a little, I think the 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 um, video's coming through. through yeah. Microphone. <laughs> and should we give a shout out to all the people that? Um, that may be watching this uh, at some point in the future at a drive-in theater. Oh yes, yes. Uh, drive-in theaters, if you are out there watching owners uh, or anybody that wants to see it, call the, your local drive-in theater proprietor because uh, how awesome would it be to see killer clowns at your local drive-in? Yeah. That's what it was made for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. Hopefully we'll be able to get you guys out uh, either through this kind of Zoom thing, give a special message to the mm -hmm. fans, and then one day we'll we'll get another great live reunion. In fact, I might even want to jump into that. What, one of the greatest events that I've ever been to, in fact, I will just say it's the greatest event that I've been to, even though, you know, you, people may have gone to the Hollywood Bowl to see Star Wars in concert or mm. Harry Potter. My favorite event was Killer Clowns from Outer Space, live in concert. And John, you put that together. How did that happen? Oh, you're the guy that came? Me. <laughs> what are you talking about, John? That was well, it, it was, was the third. It was amazing. It was a packed house. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was the 30th anniversary, and I just couldn't let the 30th anniversary go 
by without celebrating for the fans, giving them a great cinematic experience with a live orchestra. We had the Dickies performing live on stage with an orchestra. Uh, it was a packed house. Everyone was there. And well, you guys were there. It was complete insanity. It was wonderful. It was, it was one of the most, I have to say, it was like absolutely one of the epic nights of my life. I literally, <laughs> during the night, I just said, oh my God, this is surreal. It's so perfect. Everybody was in such a great mood. And there was performers and clowns, people taking pictures and the orchestra that you put together in the pit and the mm -hmm. dick playing. I mean, everything about it was just so cool. It was yeah. a fantastic yeah. event. All the elements came together and the audience was so 100% with us all. It was like one big killer clown family. It really was, like you said, mm -hmm. Greg, a highlight for me. Right. You feel the love and the joy in the room. I've never felt anything quite like it. Great. And, Great and, that, and the, and the, um, the scene you put together with uh, uh, Grant and Suzanne, uh, I said, guys, you're going to do a scene. Steve's going to direct you. And I went <laughs> on to rehearse the orchestra. And you guys put together a really great recreation. It was just, it was so sweet to see you guys Wasn't have so fun? much fun. Wasn't that fun, Suzanne? Yeah. You and Grant it was really together. fun. It was, it, was, it was really a perfect night. I mean, even just walking in with the clowns outside, shooting the fans. Um, and the audience with popcorn guns. And I mean, it was phenomenal before you even walked in. It was amazing. And everyone was so happy. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was a unique was red great car. coming together. Yeah. And of course, yeah. this was at the, uh, the, the wonderful like Montalban the Theater uh, in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, it was in Hollywood, like Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. Yeah. When you walked on the sidewalk, you were on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You saw, you know, stars' names like Frank Sinatra and what have you. Uh, their names were on there and it was just you know I, I gotta tell you uh, it's um, I had envisioned it that it would turn out like that but I could not envision the the feeling of everyone responding to it that 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 was so precious I'll never forget that I think I think I've chalked up another three or four years onto my life of of good vibes that I got from everybody Hey, I'm I get good vibe just by thinking about it, right? Because <laughs> it's so good, you can get kind of little flashback highs off of just by thinking about it. Right. Well, it shows you how you know the uh, the music alone is great, but then in that forum with the uh, the full orchestra, mm -hmm. it just really came to life in a way that I had never experienced before. It was just just a, a remarkable a remarkable event. Just had a blast that night. And I remember after when we were at the we were at the W, we had a little after party. And there was a, Edward came up to me and he says, you know what, thank you for making our movie so special. I mean, it wasn't me, the movie is special, but the event was so special. You made a special event. And John, I want you to tell us, there's hopes of having this happen again sometime in the future? Oh yes, I'm working with a, uh, a producer and uh, we're in talks with the, the, the correct people and we're gonna be doing something special. Uh, it, wow. would have, it would have been happening this this well, hopefully, October, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> but hopefully, apparently it's not. Hopefully, it'll happen before the sequel comes out. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it'll. Hopefully yes. It whether or not there's a sequel or not. <laughs> oh, that's John, true. What about John? That's what I think he uh, means. Clowns yeah. the musical. <laughs> like well, you know what? I, I, oh my god. I've got enough material to make a musical. Let's put it that way. Killer clowns on ice. Act Killer clowns. No, of course, Killer clowns has been on ice for over thirty years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's been in a, it's been in a coma. Uh, <laughs> You're in Moody's Town now. Yeah. yeah. How can we? Do we have a signal when somebody wants to talk? To let? Otherwise, we're going to be talking all over each other. What can we do? Maybe go like this when you want to talk, or go like this. Yeah, yeah, oh. I like that. Yeah, Suzanne, Just, Suzanne teacher. will point. Yes. Oh no. no. <laughs> Okay, John, you may speak yeah. now. Suzanne would be like, she's like the school teacher and we're the class. You know? <laughs> so if you guys would like, we could go ahead and jump right into the film and we'll just- Let's go for it. Let's go. All right, everybody at home, if you <clears throat> haven't already, quickly pull up Netflix or YouTube for your own copy of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We will play it at the same time and we'll be providing commentary here with the creators of the film. So if you've got it ready, on the count of three, when I say play, play. Three, two, one, play. All I see is a lion. 
And we all, we want to turn our volume down a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I, I turn. I think I know the the movie pretty well. I yeah, I can yeah. I can basically yeah. see okay, it no, silent. Funny. So. And so, uh, guys, uh, the, the inspiration of this, I love movies like The Blob and all sorts of fun 50s and 60s movies. Clearly, the, 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 you know, that was a kind of direction that you were going with these clowns in this small town, isolated, where, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be, if you're up on the top of the world, you're, you're alone. If you're attacked, you're not going to have any help. Uh, what, what kind of influences did the movies of the 50s and 60s have with you guys? Well, you I hit it on exactly. the head. You know, right out of the bat, you know, we love the same movies that you just mentioned, specifically The Blob, you know, and the frame, a lot yeah, the, of similarities. The frame Ray, Ray, the Ray Harryhausen, they, they're huge Ray Harryhausen fans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at The Blob, uh, the Steve McQueen version of The Blob, yes. we followed that, that storyline with the, the cops and the kids running around trying to protect the authorities. It's, um, it's a perfect sci-fi model for this kind of horror movie. And you guys covered it great because it's got a lot of heart. The thing that I love about that original blob with um, was the, the heart. I, I actually felt for the main characters, just mm -hmm. like I feel for uh, Tommy and, and, and everybody in, in, in this movie. Uh, you, you connect with the characters and that's just great the way you wrote it all out. And uh, you know, Well, you know. our, our, our veteran actor, uh, John Vernon, uh, I did not get to meet him, unfortunately, but I understand from the Kyoto brothers that he, he was very endeared to them. And he just, there's something about the movie he liked and the Kyoto brothers. And he just gave a spot on performance, you know, he, 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 he kind of like anchor everything. <laughs> he lobbied he lobbied to come back on his last night of shooting where it was up at the police station. And he was saying that he says, he, you know, is, you know, the, this is something, something really good. You know, I, I was in that, that other movie, Animal House, and, you know, that Dean Wormer character, you know, people really like that. And he says, you know, I think there's something about this movie that is going to be good back. You should, guys should bring me back. I should be in the clown spaceship at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can do it because it's, they're clowns. That's why. Because yes. we can do anything we want. You know, the yeah, clown universe. Sure. You don't need to explain anything. He had an inkling that, um, that there might be another little cult uh, classic building there. It's interesting. Yeah. I spoke to John uh, Vernon's daughter and I asked her what she, what uh, John thought of the film, and she said her father was really pleased with it. He was kind of proud to be in it. So that oh. was <laughs> but wait, wasn't he? Wasn't the true elder statesman of the movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, who was the true elder Royal. statesman of the movie? Royal. 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 Yeah. Royal Dano. Yeah. And both of them collectively uh, have been in every single television show according oh my to goodness. IMDb, <laughs> known to man. I, I think, can't help but I can't help but see uh, John Vernon think of Hawaii Five. Wait, I've got to figure out this. Oh, hey Chuck. Chuck Serino's with us. Uh, can you see my face or or? I can see a photograph of you with a, a Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> <laughs> Down on the bottom left, you could uh, click the camera icon, and it should be the video. Um, I see a mute icon. I don't see a, a camera. I, oh, oh yeah, is. if you have a camera hooked up to it, you Hold should on. be there. We to... go. There we go. Hello. Awesome. Hello. Striking. You, you guys there have fancy backgrounds. All I have is my name. Background. No, well, I thought you were at your club. So let's yeah, see. Let's club see Serino. I was out there in the pool. I, oh, cool. I just let a bunch of monarchs go, so we were celebrating. But anyway, cool. that's awesome. We're talking about killer clowns from outer space. Well, let's, yes. have a, let's have an introduction. This is Chuck Serino who just joined us, and he did some of the clown dialogue effects, and he also was the director of the music video. Oh, yes, that's right. By the Dickies. The video. I forgot about that with the Dickies. And yeah. It was so much fun. We shot extra footage with clowns. It was so cool. Uh, the Kyoto Brothers put together a whole package. This was like weeks or months after the film. Mm -hmm. And they still have costumes left. So we, we, got, we got people that would fit inside those costumes and shot more footage for the music video. And a lot, a lot of people haven't seen the video because unfortunately it's never been released with the DVDs. So hopefully- like See it is on the original VHS release. Oh, that's, that's where it is? Okay, well, that's kind of hard to is. find. Uh, well, people are I, gonna be going to eBay video. right now. <laughs> Hey, so we're going to talk about the movie. This, we just missed the Terenzi brothers. Now we're going we to go just the did, yes. Or, or they're, no, no. They're, I love it how you guys wrote them. How much Tommy loves them. That cracks me up. How much he's into them and their hijinks. Oh, you mean Mike Tobacco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Tobacco. Mike yeah. Tobacco. Yeah. I figured 
He's <laughs> way into them. Best friend. I can't, is the film here? Wait, let me go see. Well, uh, there's a film. Well, are you guys on roll? The scene that you're watching right now, that's an actual scene from Mike Tobacco trying to make, make it with a girl in the back of his truck. <laughs> the real Mike Tobacco, the one that you got, you knew as a... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mike would rather be kissing Debbie, but that was a small little tiny kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he gave her a little peck on the cheek. Well, that, I don't think Debbie Titus? was willing. <laughs> Christopher Titus is, is a character in this? Well, he... He has a, you see him just for a few minutes at the makeout play. That's him, isn't that him? Yeah, we've already passed it. Yeah, yeah we've passed right. it. That's him. That's him right there. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's a great comic, man. He is, have you guys caught his comic uh, routine? Well, it's not just a routine. He he tours and he has uh, he has quite a following. Yeah, well, this, was his first, this was his first movie. I remember when he was uh he came out to this the, the set his first night. He was he was so nervous. He had never been on a movie set before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You had to talk him into. Remember the thing about the raft? When every time Grant and Suzanne moved, it sounded like ten thousand whoopee cushions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's I funny. mean, it was really funny. I still remember us trying to make like it was probably the most uncomfortable thing you could ever make out in because you know your leg is up like this and your arm is up like this but and Stephen telling us you know just like relax like it's you're in this comfortable water bed right? yeah. <laughs> so we were definitely faking it but it was fun and uh, Gr Grant and Suzanne how did you guys come onto the project um well through a whole series of uh of uh, auditions where I think we, we must have come back, I don't know, Suzanne, about seven times and kind of mixing and matching with various people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was just a whole series of auditions and, and uh, Steve would put us on tape, we'd come back and he'd mix people around and eventually uh, he, he ended up with the three of uh, myself, Suzanne and, and uh, John Allen Nelson. Yeah, I think we locked on to you pretty quickly, uh, Grant, you know. Yeah, yeah Grant, you had that, that kind of uh, devil may care, Mike Tobacco attitude. He's <laughs> like a, a suave ladies man. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll go for anything. And Suzanne was like a, a young Jane Fonda. You know, I wanted somebody with brains and beauty. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, what, what did you guys think? Oh, go ahead, Suzanne, go ahead. Well, so... My agent read um, the script. I, I tell this story often, but she read it and she said, you've got to read this script. These guys, these three brothers are going to be like the next Steven Spielberg. Or, I mean, they're going to be huge what they're capable of doing. They're so brilliant and they're so talented. And this script, this script is going to be a cult classic. And she said, you have got to read the script and go in because it's going to be big. That's, That's a wonderful it. story. And I have an antithesis story. After I finished the score, I was delivering the tapes back to the studio. And uh, I was in the elevator at Trans World and I go, I'm going up the elevator and um, the, the guys from the accounting department and uh, legal department are saying, hey, what is that? I go, that's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. He goes, oh, just dump that in the trash. That movie's going to go nowhere immediately. And I, I looked at him and says, you know what? This isn't your movie, period. And I, I left. It was like one of those, you know, in, in, the, uh, in, in the Deer Hunter, this is this. <laughs> it was like one of those moments. <laughs> John, I would, I, would, I would go back to that guy now and say, okay, of all the trans world titles, <laughs> which one is still enduring? Which one does anybody remember, right? Right, or, right. I don't, I don't, the, the Wild Pair, the, the Further Adventures of Tennessee Buck, all those classics. Uh, how, many, how many films did they, did they make? They made 20 movies? No, they did made, they really? They made like 80 movies. I thought they made much more than 20, yeah. yeah. None of them are on Netflix. Not one of those things I see on Netflix or any of the channels. Yeah, yeah, well, it's... it's we did something. Of yeah. <laughs> well, we but we certainly you know it, it's it's really wonderful to to hear people that love this movie and grew up with this movie and passed it on to their kids. And, and you grew know. up with this movie. You know, you know what they did? They made they made 150 titles to all together. 
Seriously. Uh, trans world. You would have thought they would have said, you know what? You got the costumes and the props. Let's do Killer Clowns too. They could have done, we could have done them back to back. So that that wasn't that here was in the their financial uh, structure. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't their business model. And actually, we were we we're too much trouble. We uh, ruffled <laughs> some feathers uh, while making that movie. I don't think they liked us. Yeah, I guess that that's the thing. I think that's the reason. Okay, yeah. back to the movie. We, we have the two guys that were caught drinking in the park, right? What was your what was the model for these characters? Because well, it's so unique and so applicable to today, especially. What's really cool is John played the anarchist. I really loved how over the top he was. And it's funny, those uh, the two uh, punks right now, they're uh, locals from the Santa Cruz area. And uh, the guy did the bozo haircut all by himself. He just showed up on set. <laughs> with that haircut. I, like an emo. Yeah. Right, exactly. I didn't, I didn't tell him to. He just came that way. And I so ahead of his time. Pretty... Yeah, and he, had, and he probably has the best line in the movie <laughs> that he, he came up with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some of the best lines are improv from the actors, and his was one of them. Well, wait a minute, Nichols. he has a bunch of good lines. Dave Which Nichols. one was it? What are you in for? Is that oh, Nichols. that's the one, yeah. <laughs> Dave Nichols I, I, had a I, few ad-libs with the clown, the clown um, voices when they said things. Uh, yeah. Dave was like ad-libbing a little bit there. Uh, if you remember that session he, we did with him. Oh yeah, yeah, in, in a clown foreign language, like mm, yes. goon godo, or like good body yeah. or something. Or, <laughs> yeah, hui, oh, or, um, or, or a lot um, of those bodo. explanatives that the little clowns make and the little voices and things, he was kind of ad-libbing through that stuff. Yeah, um, John Allen Nelson, who played Dave the Cop, you know, all yeah. American, you know, good looking hunk, which he had just finished recently, you know, part of the arm <laughs> movie. Yeah, he, he was like the Dudley do right. He was the guy that they exactly uh, straight laced by the book, uh, heartthrob. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> did a great job. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, he I the first, first half of the movie, the first three weeks of our schedule, we were out out at night, all night in the woods. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be interesting to have a screening of this movie at a drive-in? at the location, at the town that it was actually shot. You know, we never did a, a, a screening at the, the amusement pier in Santa Cruz. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun on the, on the pier. Maybe the 50th with the live orchestra on the pier. Oh, man. You and, at the end, and, and at the end of the movie, we can just fly off. Like the whole, you know, just get a, 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 a levitating stage <laughs> that will go out into the ocean. With today's now, technology, yeah. you can go anywhere and make a drive in. You can project. You can project laser projected on the wall of a building. That's so sure. You can go anywhere. Absolutely. Go we did it at Burning Man. We did it yeah. at Burning Man. Yeah. yeah I just read that uh, they're turning 130 Walmart parking lots into uh, drive-ins, and of course, all the the sports stadiums now have turned their parking lots into drive-ins. So about yeah. time. Yeah. Very ironic for my uh, local Walmart, which originally was a drive-in movie theater before it got demolished. Oh, seriously? <laughs> That's going to be a drive-in theater again, so things come around full circle. <laughs> um, and uh, which of you uh, got to go to the Universal Horror Nights Killer Clowns maze? Oh, so oh, oh yeah. No, wasn't that fantastic? I did. John Murdy and his team put together. Oh. I, I got to tell you, I, I, every other week I would go either on a Friday night or Saturday night and kind of greet people as they were going in and friends of mine would show up and we would just hang around and talk. And so someone from administration came out. I thought they were going to kick me out. They said, you know, anytime you want to go in, uh, I had every, you can bring up up to 20 people at a time. You can go up front. I go, oh, wonderful. That was so sweet. And hey, you guys need anything? We put chairs or a table out for you. It was really sweet. So it was a lot of fun to meet. Uh, I, I made so many friends. It was just so wonderful. I you, think you got the opportunity back. to see both uh, the, the East Coast and the West Coast version. Yes. Great. You know, different. Yeah, both yeah. really great. Hey, so Grant, yeah. Suzanne, you want to give us your impressions of when you were doing this, when you first entered the, the spaceship? Uh, what did you think when you were doing this scene? Do you want to go first? Because I lost my picture, so I've got to go into another room and get the picture back up. I mean, I think, you know, Suzanne and I were just, uh, we were just kind of in awe of you guys. I mean, we just, every time we would show up to the set and see something else that you guys had created and done, um, we were just like little kids in a candy store. There was, I mean, there's something about it 
that was so, I mean, one, that you guys just kind of put this up in a warehouse and all hand painted and everything like that. I mean, everything was just, uh, was just so cool and so, you know, kind of candy store like and fun. And, uh, um, and we trusted you guys, you know what I mean? So you sure. we just, you guys had such a clear image and vision of what you wanted us to be doing, and uh, yeah, on, and, the, on that uh, note, I mean, it, what what I was hoping for was like a B movie performance. I mean, you guys were great, and uh, I appreciate the, uh, the 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 trust you had in me. A, a lot of the lines were just really corny, but if you said it, my my direction was always just say it with sincerity, say it like you mean it, even though it's a stupid looking clown. Make sure that you're frightened by it. As long as the emotions you communicated were real, mm -hmm. it would give us that kind of duality of something really stupid that's really frightening. And I think you guys did a good job. Well, you know, I, I did have a fear during when I was doing it because, you know, that time, you know, you're all, everybody wants to kind of be this serious method actor. And I kind of had this feeling that I was going to be this kind of over the top, you know, just bad actor. But you know, I just trusted you that you had this vision of exactly the type, you know, the type of performance that you wanted it to be, you know what I mean? That it was like very, very, you know, clear. You wanted it to be real, but at the same time encapsulate, like you said, those movies like The Blob and everything where everybody was a little bit overly earnest and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just slight, just barely over the top, you know? I mean, John maybe was a little bit more so, but that's kind of his personality too, right? John was a little bit like that in real life. Well, I'll tell you, the first time you and John worked together was when he handcuffed you, uh, when you took him to the scene of the tent and it wasn't there. And I think you guys working together for the first time, you're kind of, kind of pushing each other a little bit. And I think that was one of the better scenes as far as you two interacting. But well, you know, was, I think he had a big crush on Suzanne because he was just, you know, he was trying to play that part all the time on set. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean, what we want to hear. This is what we want to hear. He was always trying to push me away and get Suzanne. <laughs> That's funny. You know, I, I have to tell you, walking into the set, it was so unusual. Not like nothing you'd ever been on before. And so it was really easy in a way to, um, with your direction and working with Grant, who's such a good actor, it was really easy to kind of visualize it and be in that space because because you guys were so passionate about what you're doing and you love mm -hmm. what you're doing so much. No, I'm serious, the three of you together. Um, and I, I thought you were really patient with us and you, 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 you're a good, really good director. And then working with Grant, it was, it was just, fun and so bizarre how could you not have those looks on your faces that you you know that you ended up having right I remember when you got hit with the popcorn and you're running out there and you you, it comes right, know, comes when you right. approach the car it was just really really great you were really scared and I thought that was really funny because you were afraid of popcorn <laughs> do you know what you know it's really funny Stephen is that I st I just this memory just came to me uh is that uh, I, my dad at the time was living up in like way up in like Coeur d'Alene in like Northern Idaho. And I had to drive like 24 hours back. Um, it was, you know, from, from visiting him it was like Christmas time or something. And I knew I was starting the movie and I still remember driving in the car and like trying to like, as all by myself, like these long hours in the highway, trying to like practice my lines. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Well, that's been looking over at me and thinking, who's this crazy person in the, in the thing? And of course, you know, you forget all that as soon as you get in the real thing, right? But yeah, that's just yeah, a typical funny. actor kind of stressing up his performance before you do it, just thinking that you have to kind of, you know, try it a hundred times. How hard was it to remember, holy shit? <laughs> <laughs> that was about just believing that you could get yourself cranked up cranked up to that place where you believe the clowns are actually, you know, chasing you, you know? Yeah, that scene right there. That, I love that. <laughs> That's what we call Top Gun acting. <laughs> well, I have not gone through the script, but I remember the one line I remember most hearing over and over again from Mike Tobacco is, Rich Paul! <laughs> 
it seemed like it was like every five minutes at the end of the movie, you were saying, Rich, Paul. It's true. And that or holy shit or yeah. another door. <laughs> In fact, actually, funny little thing on the, on the Terenzi brothers. We, we originally, we've just, they were supposed to be heard about through the bulk of the movie. Um, you, you always hear about Rich and Paul Terenzi, Rich and Paul Terenzi, but we weren't going to introduce them until much later on in the movie. <laughs> and um, our executive, uh, Paul Mason, said we had to introduce them at the top of the movie because nobody would care about them by, by talking about them and not seeing them. And I think he was probably right. But uh, yeah, yeah we're just getting, we're trying to build up the, the myth and the legend of the Terenzi brothers only to be you know, kind of like, really? You're talking about these guys all this time? <laughs> We lost some of the jokes. A, a lot of them didn't make it into the, the picture. There's uh, there's a few lines. I I guess you know if we if I see them, I'll point them out. I think in the ice cream truck, we did a we we're gonna do a Porky Pig joke, and we never put the punchline in. Things like that. We lost a couple of really good gags and jokes and lines. You know, in the editing process. Yeah, I was gonna ask. You must have had notebooks full of like one-liners for um, for Farmer Gene and. Uh, and and the different gags for the uh, clowns to use like the the the, the balloon animals you know tracking them down the movie gives you everything that you would want and like it delivers everything perfectly uh, were, were were there any specific gags like for the clowns like the with the stuffed uh, balloons that you guys didn't quite get into the film well yeah I, actually just to go back to something else you guys talked about it was the uh, uh, we didn't write jokes. All of, it, all of the comedy comes from the situation and how the people were reacting. So there was no real jokes Steve, written, but there Steve, were lines. Do you remember, do you remember that uh, when we were all, before we made the movie, we were up there for a couple of weeks and uh, Suzanne and I were always like, we were always hanging out by the pool out there at the little place. And uh, we were always coming up to you, what if we said this? What if we said this? Yeah, You're yeah. just going, oh my <laughs> gosh, would you just say the lines I wrote? No, no. You know, and that, 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 like, guys, yeah, I, I was I was a young I was a new director there and I should let you guys go with it. I was a little bit too tight on what I was, you know, my our lines. I don't know why we fell in love with them. They were, you know, they were what they were. But uh, but I do remember I said, come on guys, let's uh, get together and do a little go over the rehearsal a little bit. And you guys said, no, <laughs> you yeah. wanted to relax because I think Suzanne, you just came off a movie, a couple of movies, I think you were working at night. And uh, and I think Grant, you were saying, no, you wanted to make it happen at the moment. You didn't want to burden it with too much rehearsal and, and yeah i don't know no, the tendency oh, there is something there is something about we just want especially with something like this you know of just of wanting to you have to kind of it's very difficult to do it three quarters or halfway you know you've kind of mm, yeah. got to get crank it all the way up right and you can only really do that right at that moment right suzanne oh absolutely i mean i think that was part of it walking onto the set yeah, it was it kind of made everything come out of us because it was you couldn't envision what we were going to see and what we were going to experience till we were on the set. You explained things to us, but we didn't have your brain <laughs> and, and your ideas. And so when we got on there, that was where it was just. What's well, part of the studio we made it for? They didn't get it either. They, they hadn't a clue. They thought we were just. Uh, you know, just throw some guys in some white face with red noses on and kill people. Um, luckily, they got they had another project that was going on in Sri Lanka that was problematic. So all the executives flew to Sri Lanka and left us alone. Uh, <laughs> Thank gosh, we, right? We, yeah, you know, yeah. We kind hey, of guys, empowered. Hate to do this, but uh, my wife has stuck her head in about three times because I go just my my brother's birthday. I wish I could be here for the whole whole time, but. Uh, um, have a great time, Cody. Thank you so much. Anytime, anything else. And I just want to say that the, the coolest thing of all about Killer Clowns, besides the fun of making the movie, is the fact that we really have kind of become a family over the years, right? We've, we've, yeah. we've, we've just continuously become closer and closer, which is just awesome. Well, take care. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Take care, Grant. Take care, Grant. Oh, Love you guys, really. <laughs> Anytime, any place. Got it. <laughs> Take care. We'll and keep so in touch. You, Dan. Uh, now the, the trick with a movie like this is you immediately want to go to parody and satire, make a scare, you know, a Wayne Brothers scary movie out of it. That was the biggest struggle 
People want to go for the joke. We, like Stephen said, the dark humor, the absurdity of the situation is the comedy, not making fun of clowns. And that, that was the toughest hurdle to get over. They didn't, whether you play it as a comedy or serious. And we were constantly, you know, walking that line. And you guys, you know, walk that line perfectly with this film. As you were saying, there's seriousness. It's a fantastic premise, you know, killer clowns from outer space. Holy S. <laughs> but um, you guys, you guys pulled it off with this movie where, you know, so many funny moments, but then there, and there will be so many dark moments. Like when uh, the clown is going after the, uh, the little girl and, and John, you know, you did the perfect music for that. It's nothing over the top evil music, but it's just so creepy what you did there. I love like what you did. Bar bar oh. Barely a little child's voice, you know, uh, going through that thing, which make, makes it even <laughs> more scarier. And this is so great, the, the so puppet. We're at, we're, we, <laughs> the first person just been turned into the uh, a cotton candy cocoon. And I made a bunch of th these little snacks for myself. I got some of uh, those little gummy people, those Sour Patch Kids, and uh -huh. I just wrapped it up in some uh, cotton candy. Oh. <laughs> a healthy snack. Mm -hmm. In the spirit of it. Oh, so here we are with our uh, town invasion here. That's Mr. Myers. We actually had a Mr. Myers in our not Myers drugstore on Long Island. Uh -huh. uh. And this is where we got, this is some of our shtick from the Three Stooges. There's a lot of Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers, and Three Stooges, and Laurel and Hardy all wrapped up in this movie. Yeah. When I look at this, I look at it, and the, the payoff, the punchline on this was, was Tiny sneezing into the, into the talcum powder. What we should have done is had him sneeze and then cut to people being blown out off the sidewalk. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It needed to be bigger, but we, we were, you know, we were sort of restricted by what well, we what, could do. Well, I look at it now. The whole, the whole drugstore scene was extended. It's one of the sequences that the executives wanted to add to. After they saw the cut of the movie, they wanted to add certain sequences. So that's what you know, the, uh, the extended sequence in the drugstore was all about. I love this, the pizza. We could, we could barely make a car go off a cliff. We're going to blow out storefront windows. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that, that the the shorty coming out of the pizza. Out of the pizza boxes. It, it, it would normally be impossible for him, even him to be fitting in there, but I it's saw like a Mary the, Poppins uh, box. I saw, the behind the, like. I saw the behind the scenes of that coming out of the pizza box just like a week ago. And it's amazing all the minute detail that goes into it just to capture that one shot. It was 30 takes, I think. Yeah. Get that to coordinate. Because the guy is blind, he had to point the gun at the right direction. Uh -huh. you know, it, it was that it was an, that was an added scene too. That was a. Yeah. Oh, this is this is one of my favorite scenes. This one here, real drama. <laughs> yeah, I'm not your boyfriend anymore. <laughs> I think this is. This, I love Suzanne, that. you did it great. Yeah, I think yeah. this. Is, oh, you guys are great here. <laughs> I mean, this is what I wanted. I mean, when we played this at the concert, live. Every gag in this movie had a response. There was no, no one, it's like, it's like nothing went over anyone's head. They That's got true. everything, you know, just wonderful to hear a whole theater full of people laughing. And look at, look at Debbie, rub it in to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's watching. Probably take me out and shoot me somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She, she, kiss, she kisses him now, but she wouldn't kiss him at the raft. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so that was, your, that was your plan all along. <laughs> that look that he gives them when they give that kiss, that's perfect. Oh, no, I really love this. this you little heartbreaker. <laughs> no, you were just using, you were using Mike Tobacco to make, <laughs> make Dave jealous. <laughs> I, no, I love I, how, I, go ahead, go ahead, John. I, I, I have a, a girly question. Your hair design was current for that year, correct? Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. So what is that called, that wavy waviness? Oh, big hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, no you know, I'd, I'd done another film 
right before that, my hair was straight and it was okay. red. It, I remember. Okay. And so we needed to do something different. Right. right? And right. Um, John was blonde and Grant dyed his hair dark for the right. movie. So that so was you did, did yours. Yeah, that and, was and your costume, the, the, the outfit that you had, was that like Banana Republic? I mean, what do you do? You know anything about that? I'm just curious. The only reason why is that Mrs. Masari can tell within ten seconds tell you when a movie was made based on the set design, what people were wearing, makeup style, and hairstyle. So to me, I, I kind of look at all this now. So your 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 costuming and your shoes and stuff like that were those all a particular style of at the time that was was the hippest thing or or what so what i remember was this that we had to wear more muted colors to really make the killer clowns pop oh that was okay. what the cost the wardrobe person told me gotcha. that our colors needed to be more muted gotcha to differentiate us from the clowns is that right yes that's that right. makes that's perfect right. sense perfect this brilliant stuff. you're not you're not, you're not clashing but yeah. Suzanne's character was meticulous in getting in her preparation to get dressed. That shower and her getting dressed is like the longest thing on film recorded history. I've never seen so many layers on a person. You had the, the long skirt down to the ankles. You had boots. Then you had a shirt. Then you had a sweater. Then you had a thing. You know what? I wouldn't take that up to you know uh, the top of the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, she had the layer look. Black, you know, like tobacco, you do. You have layers and layers. Yes. To keep them at bay. Well, well, I remember also that they were worried I'd be really cold out. Outside. Was right. That makes sense. It was really cold. So the ward, the costume person was worried that I'd be chilly. And then the mm. dinosaur was because I was really into paleontology. Remember that? That's cool. Mm. Yeah. That is cool. Let's, let's set the record straight right now. This clown's name is Tiny. <laughs> Not Shorty. <laughs> Oh, you mean uh, you mean the clown, the punching clown is not sh never shorty. It was tiny, tiny, tiny. Oh, all these years. So what do we do, guys? Everyone knows it as shorty. No the big shorty cares. is a meme now for for people uh, that have been uh, uh, bullied and, and who can fight back. You know, don't mess with shorty. Tiny's motorcycle was beautifully made. Mm -hmm. We never got a hero shot of it. Oh. oh. Yeah. We never got a hero shot of it. He picks it up and breaks it, and it comes out and it comes in in shadow. So you never see how beautiful the bike was. So, in other words, when he breaks it, that's not a backup. That's not the the. There's not two models. There's one. He made no, one. It was one and one and done on that movie. Wow. Oh. Okay. So so if you weren't rolling and they destroyed it, you guys would have had to stick it together really fast for another take. One take, one shot deal. Wow. Like the car. Now yes. look at this, in this scene here now, we're looking at the big burger scene here. This is where the, there's a shift in tone. This mm -hmm. is supposed to be my Alfred Hitchcock scene. <laughs> oh, no, truly spine tingling. And like I said, the, the music choice is perfect by John here. Yeah, the, John. The, the way he's waving, it's beautiful. Yeah, John, you really did carry the suspense here. And with your music. I'm, now I'm waiting for the Hitchcock moment. So what happened? What's, what's the hick? This Hitchcock is it, moment? the whole scene. Oh, the whole scene. Oh, scene. Is that he gets his not a block knocked off. We don't expect his head to fall off. I thought, right. I thought you were talking about your, your Hitchcock cameo in this. You're, you're, aren't you eating a burger in the background here? Oh, me? No, that was cut out. <laughs> oh, why? Oh. No, the three brothers were in the burger e eating, and there was a shot that was cut out because that was our cameo, our Alfred Hitchcock cameo. Now, how come that was taken out? Because stupid. Unintense. <laughs> Wait yeah, a minute. It was Were you guys eating a hamburger or pasta? <laughs> you know what it was? They they had a shortened for uh for time. Oh. Yeah. oh, that's ridiculous. We need to find that picture. That'd be a really great picture. That's that is, is, that this is, reaction, you know, was supposed to be furious, and I was real disappointed in that. To 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 the button on that scene after the girl was saved by her mother. Right. He should have taken the mallet and smashed the horse. And we would have oh, seen what yeah. would have been in store for the little girl. Oh, wow. That's so you never shot that? Never shot uh, no, In fact, actually, what we wanted to do, we wanted to make a little more of a false scare. But again, a, a note from our executive just wanted us to take the edge off of it. But people really like that scene. You know, it, it, still, it still does what we wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder if this little girl had to go to therapy afterwards. Well, she must be like, what, 40? <laughs> 45 now? You make that sound so terrible, Edward. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I, I, I guess we know her name. I, I've never really tried to contact her, but it'll be interesting to see if uh, how the movie has affected her, whether she has any notoriety or any regrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, where are they now? Right, well, you know, you know, uh, the concert, the guy that plays the guy driving in the car, he came to the concert. Uh, and, and he still does stunt work. Is, is, is I that understand. Johnny? Is that yeah, Johnny? Yeah. yeah, he's, oh, yeah. he's, he's a producing and directing too. Yeah. 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 And this is where we ruined a $2,000 uh, yeah. uh, popcorn. Well, a free uh, promo car, pitch a car, cost us $2,500 because we destroyed the interior with this, uh, the, the rubber cement webbing. That we, is, that, is that a Volvo? No, that we were guaranteed would not damage the interior. I specifically said, we're going to be spraying this. Oh, no, it'll peel right off. Yeah, but it peeled the vinyl off, too. Oh. We had to go to another Jeep dealer, buy a, an interior, and have them replace it without telling the one that gave it to us for free. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so you guys have a tally on all these costs, apparently. Yeah. 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 Didn't go into the special effects. I like this scene. This is really great with these two guys. I mean, it some is. people say it's so campy, but excuse me, I think this works really well. No, yeah, the the, the evolution of their relationship uh, is fantastic between the two. I mean, and then and then it ends with uh, Mike giving him the biggest hug uh, right after uh, Debbie at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Dave, Dave's a true professional. He cannot deny the evidence here. <laughs> well, yeah. what, what's great about this scene is that there's an eerie stillness to it. They got him. Which, which is really good. And it's outdoors, and it's not, like, completely dark. You know, yeah. it's got, like, dimension to it. And you have all those, the color, you have the red blood, like, cocoon colors inside. Yeah, very great contrast with, you know, we, we saw how lively it was, all the kids, you know, young love getting together, and then silence, eeriness, everyone's gone. Yeah, it's true. Really good. Okay, uh, can I read some comments from some of the viewers? Yeah, let's take some questions. Go ahead. Um, who are the old guys, and who's the, who's the, who's the uh, cute girl with the uh, long hair? That was one of the things. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so um, uh, anyways, one, now can you imagine someone asked this question? We tuned in late. They, uh, they talked about us. Have they talked about a sequel yet? This is from Josh M. No, we, don't, we don't talk about the sequel anymore. <laughs> Heck, even a Scooby-Doo style cartoon would be amazing. Yeah, had uh, anybody ever approached you guys about an animated show? Because they made an animated show of uh, the killer tomatoes. Why not the killer clowns? Well, well actually, did. Saban, Saban, Saban Entertainment did did approach us on it um, mm -hmm. uh, about it. They, they wanted to do a killer clowns from outer space with one caveat: the clowns had to be nice. Hmm. What? It couldn't yeah. be killer. That's impossible. Because yeah. it was going to be a kids show. So well, we I, didn't really. We, that didn't get any traction. <laughs> I can't even imagine how that would go. I can't imagine. Killer clowns from outer space being called killer clowns from outer space, and then giving out like, uh, you know, uh, toothbrush tips to kids. Oh, no. It was going to be care clowns from care outer. Care clowns from outer space. No, oh my our, our, our fans would have killed us. No, of course, of course. I want to kill myself. But you know, I I have a generic response after over the. I haven't been at this as long as you guys, as you know. I discovered kind of like the fandom and all that just like at the at the twenty fifth anniversary. Prior to that, I was really unaware of uh, of going to conventions and stuff like that. It's just here's, completely wait, here's, oblivious. Here's the opening the, the scene with the clown and the car. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. That was going to be the uh, the, the opening uh, scene. Yeah, well, opening this, scene. Yeah, yeah, this was the inception of the whole concept, and we wanted this to be at the beginning of the movie. This right. was supposed to be the opening scene, but then our executive mentioned that. Uh, uh, the clown's ship hadn't landed yet, so where right. did these clowns come from? And I said, 
They're clowns. Yeah, <laughs> multi-dimensional. Well, it's kind of like you know a, a um, James Bond movie starts off with an action sequence. Yeah, yeah. You know, so would have made perfect about. sense. Yeah, but the, the but the whole it was just technically just fraught with this you know troubles throughout. The yeah. rig didn't work properly. We just didn't have enough. Scene. Actually, it was out of it was out of the movie entirely. But then yeah. Charlie went with uh sat down with our editor Chris Roth and kind of salvaged it for that scene. Oh, it's and a great he, scene. He added the uh. The couple of animation cuts in it to kind of make it what it is. And well, can, I, can I be quite honest with you? The, yeah, the, the, the fact that the car did not fly off the bridge is no big deal. It's okay that if it flaccidly kind of falls off, it's uh, okay. It's not, what, what's fascinating is that he's flying next to the car. You know? the, the, the thing with the uh, re editing it, because I didn't want to throw out the beautiful animation scenes that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, Gene Warren did. We started, the, the only way we could put that thing in is the car passes and the clown is behind it, which we revealed the clown wasn't in the car. I, I would see. have rather seen that afterwards. Uh, that would have meant I would have had to throw out the animation. Looking back on it, I maybe should have thrown out the animation to make the sequence more like it was originally planned, the way Steven said it, yeah. that the clown pulls up next to you. The first time you see a clown is not mm -hmm. outside the vehicle, but when you look out the window. Yeah. I, I had a tough time with that scene. We shot it twice and both had horrible technical difficulties. The first time we shot it, we, uh, the, there wasn't enough light on the background, so it looked like we were on stage shooting against Black Limbo. So when we reshot it, um, we were on such a bumpy road that the long lenses, everything blurred. So between the two sequences, the two uh, shoot days, right. I, I couldn't see putting it together. And I was just, I had it at that point. So Charlie tried to resurrect it as best we could with what we had uh, been given. No, we had, uh, we had uh, you know, taken time, you know, to, we sped up the shooting so we, we could make the extra, you know, make up the time. And we wound up shooting that thing three, we used three days to, to shoot that thing. We shot it three different times to make it work, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the ridiculous schedule that we, we, we had in the first place. So one of the questions was about how did you shoot that, uh, uh, the, the clown being in the invisible car and that's basically the work of gene warren one of our effects person um john heil built this rig it's a little outrigger that mounted on the side of the car and it was a rail yeah. that had a seat on it that the mm -hmm. clown was able to go forward and back he had controls in his wrist it was practical and, uh, you know so it it actually was literally bolted onto the side of the car and we we ran it uh up to like i think like 30 miles an hour yeah. and then we had a stuntman in the clown car mike martinez um, in the clown suit, and, and he was he was in the car on an outrigger, driving, flying right next to it. Well, and the uh, headlights mounted headlight. on bl thin black uh, steel rods that mounted it out in front of his feet, and, and if lit properly, the black rod disappears. Yeah, it was pretty. Well, and pretty this is my favorite scene right now, guys. Watching the movie, this oh, was thank you. my favorite scene. Well, it, I love this the, scene. Yeah, I love so, it. I'll tell you, this Netflix copy is great. It's yeah. got really good, great color. Nobody's done a scene like this. Conceptually and execution, this is a perfect scene. Yeah. Are you, are you talking about the puppet? I mean, the uh, shadow? The yeah, shadow gag. Everything. Yeah, the shadow gag. And this is what makes you guys masters, is you guys were able to recreate this in real life uh, <laughs> for, for performance. Yeah, that was fun. That was, yeah, that was the, I remember when I saw, first screened the movie and there was no music behind it, it was, fascinating and creepy that's and, a great joke who can edward you come up with that joke the last one no, watching no, crossing no, the delaware yeah, what's, the, what's the most outrageous what's the, like the stupidest iconic thing that we could come up with and yeah just thought watching crossing the delaware would just be just funny just out there like wow right where'd that come from and it was doable because the other the other alternative was uh, uh, the Last Supper. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I, I mean, I don't remember coming up with it, so I, I was curious because it, it, it was a perfect one, recognizable, and it's a great clean silhouette, so people can kind of, you can get it really we quickly. We wanted to look at a classic piece of artwork that could be duplicated that was complicated, not a simple shadow gag. Right. We actually went, no, The Last Supper, how are we going to make that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, you know, secular. We, have, we have you know this is where we cut we had the guy in the costume and then we cut to the puppet head i think mitch bryan did like the pickups and then um, i'm pretty sure ralph miller is watching us on youtube i think he did a lot of the the, the puppetry up on location 
Mm -hmm. um, in Santa Cruz, you know, the, the clowns were built by Dwight Roberts. My, my wife's favorite line is, is Grant's line. I freaked out a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is, the, that is a, what, you know, it's, it's interesting when, when we go to screenings and I'm outside listening to the movie, like if I'm listening to a radio show, the lines are just, are just brilliant. I love it when, um, one of the Terendi, one of the Terendi, Terenzi brothers says, uh, then how come they're not funny? I didn't <laughs> Yeah, it and this like line sticks it, out so much more funny. And there's point. a line coming up now when when Dave says to Mike, "And don't do anything stupid." Yes, it's, it's these little lines. I don't know where they come from, but they made perfect sense to us. <laughs> <laughs> don't do anything stupid. <laughs> and this one, his tag is really funny here too. John's. Yeah, that's him. That John. This is the way he wanted to do it, and I thought it was very clever. And I, he I looks. Like he breaks the fourth wall. He looks at the camera. And uh, he adds the over as to fuck you. <laughs> over. And it's great that you guys designated him to be the one that delivers the title of the movie in the film. You know, uh, yeah, that's my favorite line. That's right. Wow. Yeah, it's always, it's always fun when you can when you can incorporate the title of the movie in the movie, and <laughs> you know, the, obviously we had it was challenging, but then it was just it was just perfect location, and, and his delivery was just. What really made sells it makes it work. The whistle, the, the whistle punctuated it perfectly. Yeah. Oh, uh, that that's obviously in the police station, right? Yeah, yeah. early on. Yeah. Yeah, John Vernon. And the whole so, foreshadowing. So uh, back to the the whole people will ask me about a sequel as if we could say, oh, you know, let's just get everyone together and just do another movie. I t what I tell people is that you know MGM is a publicly traded company. They have a website. And, a, and contact information. You can ask them about it. You can request that you want to see another movie. I can't do it. You know, it's, a, it's a, they're almost getting upset at me that I haven't done it yet. <laughs> they go, well, I, I can't do it. It's not up to me. I don't own it. They're very upset at us, but you're right, John. If the fans want to see the sequel, it's up to them now to contact NGM, who controls it, and, and, and ask for it. And the more response they get right. from a fan base, the more likely they're going to be funding something like that. It's MGM.com. And it's just like every publicly traded company, there's a contact information. You, and you can say anything you want. And they love hearing from consumers. So uh, for the 120 people watching this, I hope you pursue that. No, we tried. We've tried for 30 years. Yeah. Um, they're unwilling. I don't think they want, they don't want to spend the money that would it take, it would take to do a, a, a good, a decent Killer Clown sequel. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're unwilling. They'd rather do a, you know, a, a, they'd rather go cheap with a web series or something. We want just a little bit, not a lot, just something so that we could do something nice so that we can give people. Well, we kind of want some money. We're not going to do it for $2 million. <laughs> like right, right, money. right. That's exactly, <laughs> the point. That's exactly the point. We can't do it for $2 million, and they haven't made us a decent offer. Well, yeah, guys, but... I mean, let me tell you something. I'm working on something, an idea, with uh, a friend of mine uh, that's a producer of, this, of, of big live events, and uh, perhaps there is something special we can do. I don't know. Well, that would be great. That'll but be great. we have the ears of the powers that be that like what he's coming up with. And uh, he's given them a challenge. No, they have given him a challenge. And we're going to come back with a counter challenge that I, I think they will find very attractive. It's like, I feel like a kid at Christmas, but I can't tell you yet. Well, that's cool. I can't even tell you guys yet. Because <laughs> I do know with uh, with your with your live uh, concert, mm -hmm. and the uh, live shadow gag that we've done in theaters. Oh yeah, this, that's the so component fun. of this live live killer clowns event would be so cool because a lot of our ideas can be accomplished uh, in a live uh, format. So yes, that's well, really seri exciting. The serious fans of this movie, they just want any excuse to show up somewhere. Yeah. Wearing a clown suit. Well, I'll tell you, the, the uh, Universal uh, Horror Haunt is another example of a live event and how the fans just flocked to it. So there is undeniably a, a fan base that will spend money. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, people were in line for hours at, at both uh, Florida and here in Los Angeles 
for for an experience that lasted what five minutes yeah yeah you know i mean and, and sometimes in the in the searing heat or sometimes here in la it gets really cold at night during the summer and uh, they didn't mind waiting two hours to see something that's you know that because they can say i was there i saw it you know that was the whole thing about the experience so if they're willing to go through that much trouble for a five minute experience i'm sure for a two hour experience in a movie theater they would they would love that too Looking back, this is one thing like that, you know, like up to this point, it's just kind of a funny, lark, silly movie. Mm -hmm. Here, just the movie just takes a, a really interesting turn here. It just it becomes a becomes a different beast. Yeah, I think the 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 fun horror becomes a little bit more visceral and serious. Uh, and I think it's a great change in tone. I mean, it's always kind of stupid, but <laughs> it's yeah, very stupid. We stuck, we stuck stupid. in. You know, with all the, the the frivolity leading up to this point, but now here the the stakes change. Yeah. Especially when Dave comes back, because now it's one a character we really care about. It it bothered me that Mooney had his gun drawn and he turned his back on the guy that he put into the cell. But clearly, he's not a good cop to begin with. <laughs> He, he doesn't have to. I don't know. It, it, that, that's the kind of reality that doesn't take place in this movie. Yeah. And and that's a. One of the amazing things, like you said, it takes a different turn at this point of the movie where uh, this character that we people would probably label as the villain, you know, we don't like Mooney, and yet it's still so um, identifiable and creepy what happens to him. Yeah, yeah, you still his feel loss that. of humanity. Best line in the movie. <laughs> Catch the, foreshow the, the foreshadowing. He says, "Go ahead, make a dummy out of yourself, but you're not going <laughs> to make a dummy out of me." That was cruel what you did to him. It was cruel and unforgivable. Yeah. And everyone loved it. Really horrible, but it's not it's not visually horrific. It's right. The sound effect is what makes it really horrible. It, exactly. You told it with a sound effect, which is great. Yeah, too bad Ch Chuck's not here. He's making dinner for his family. Yeah. Okay. I he just to texted that. me. In this scene here, this is right out of Looney Tunes. Uh, if you guys remember <laughs> Duck Twacy, he was following footprints. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes, where comes from. See, when I saw it, I thought, "Oh, this is like a dance studio." You know, uh, you no, have to like put your feet. Check yeah. it out. Look at look up a, a duck Twacy with Daffy Duck. Right. And this scene is in there with Neon Noodle. <laughs> I just did it. the the variation I did on it. I made them colorful instead of black. Looking at it, I might have wanted to do it in black. It might have read clearer, but. Oh yeah. no, no, this is fun. I think it's more fun. We put a spin on it. It's not regular footprints, yeah. it's mm -hmm. clown footprints. And then they go all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't have seen where... them if they were dark. I think that's why, yeah, that's that that was we were worried about that. Boy, that scene where he does the uh, I don't know what we call that thing you blow out uh, the party whatever, blower, right? The party the party, party favor thing that turns out to an arm. That was so vicious. So vicious. A big surprise. Yeah. This should have been cut differently. That should have been the reveal, his point of view, that, and then we pull back. It was, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. and then and the, the, the clown here, like uh, somebody just pointed out, it, we called him killer on set. Yes. I don't know what the fans call him, but yeah, this was the killer clown. Oh, someone called, I think they call him Jumbo. Jumbo. Yeah. Or something Jumbo. like that. He's killer. I see. I thought. Up knows all the names. No, this is the same one that had the mallet, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's the same one. Okay. Well, the it one was, thing they don't get wrong is Clownzilla. They got that right, at yeah. least. Yeah, we didn't violate any copyrights, did we, when we called them Clownzilla? But it's not really called Clownzilla in the movie. No, 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 no. None right. of the clowns have names in the movie. It's just what we call them on set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good sound effect. All right, who did that? <laughs> Cody. I have fun with my sound effects. Cody, you <laughs> promised us you wouldn't do that. And you no, I, did I, I did, I did, I did. Oh. I got to keep my finger off the button. <laughs> and this this scene, we see the malevolence of the clowns more than any time but before. But this, this wasn't shot right. It was supposed to be an isolated shot of John without seeing the clown. And we were supposed to pan with John and reveal the clown. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, the, the AC or the DP, whoever shot it, just didn't get it right. But Charlie, your makeup on John Vernon was just 
just Perfect. on target, not too much, not too little, very subtle. For those who don't know what it was, I took the thumbprints of Jumbo, dipped in Mooney's blood and put them on his cheeks and the dripping blood from his mouth became the ventriloquist mouth. And look at John, hey, he, he moves forward and he catches the light in his eye. The guy's a real top-notch pro. Yeah. He moves into the light. He was so great. I learned a lot from him. He was great. John Vern, well, he's been on a set or two. <laughs> he knew he how to play the light. He would just, he'd be in the darkness and he'd come in and he'd just get that glint. He knew it. Yeah. Now that's great how he pulls his hand out, why, you know, wipes it off and just throws the body to the ground because these humans are nothing to these clowns. They're food. Yes. Things. And this scene here is from Howard Hawks' The Thing from Another oh. World, the original, the way he comes forward so uh, <laughs> monstrously, just walking slowly. Yeah, man, a lot of, lot of uh, sci-fi movies in this one. Yeah. And these are all our favorite movies. The Blob, you know, The Thing, um, it, you know, uh, uh, Forbidden Planet, you know, this is our homage. We just basically reinvented the things that we loved, the things right. that we watched when we were kids. I remember you guys uh, told, gave me a list of all your favorite movies and I went to the video store and rented <laughs> VHS tapes of all your movies. I just watched every one of those movies like at least two or three times to kind of get into the vibe. And you know what, it's really funny. You can't find some of those old 50s movies on Netflix or any other, I look for them on Tubi and you know, uh, right. you know all those and I can't find them. You know, and well, um, uh, Forbidden Planet. Um, it, it, I forgot where I saw it. I, I don't know if it was Amazon or. Oh, it's they. They've got a classic, like steel case set for Forbidden Planet. It's one of the classic sci-fi films. You'll yeah. see that one. Yeah, it's really, it's really. Um, I, I've streamed it online, and it looks. Oh, he, here's fantastic. the joke. Here's the joke he tried to set up with. Uh, In like Terenzi. Yeah. Oh, the, that's all, folks? Yeah, yeah. It was supposed yeah. to be Porky Pig's line. He's supposed to say, uh, I'm Porky Pig. And then when we cut to the killer clown uh, taking over the town, he's supposed to go, duh, 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 duh. that's all, <laughs> folks. <laughs> <laughs> but the executive said, nobody's going to get the joke. Come oh, on. please. Yeah. Too much time passes for when that's, it. That's what. We, there was too much time passed. We couldn't fit it in, Edward. No, right. you could have, I, we could have put it over that image there. Duh, 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 that, that's all, <laughs> folks. And then we could have cut to this. You know, right? You're right. Why does it have to be a picture of, of Paul? Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> this this tried scene very... was also amazing. This scene was also just amazing. Wasn't it, wasn't it, Suzanne? The whole town turned into an invasion. Yeah, that was, that was, an inc that was incredible to watch this scene. Did the mayor of the town give you the keys to the city? He gave us the boot. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want us there. Got the oh, no. He let us in the, in the town. He, was, he gave us a broom and a dustpan to clean up the mess. <laughs> Actually, this mall no longer exists where we shot this. It was destroyed in the uh, earthquake uh, a few years later. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, after a very long shower, we cut back to <laughs> heavy. <laughs> now, this is, a, this is an interesting detail. Dressing provocatively. <laughs> I had wanted Suzanne, Debbie, to be in her underwear from this point on in the movie. <laughs> Very much you. like Sigourney Weaver in Aliens. What? Just like Sigourney Weaver in Aliens. And, and uh, she politely said, you crazy? It's cold outside. <laughs> I said, OK. <laughs> Uh, but now I understand that, uh, that people are giving uh, uh, Ridley Scott a lot of shit for what he did to Sigourney Weaver to put her. So, um, so I make her vulnerable. Vulnerable. but the point was, I wanted to make her as vulnerable as we could right. in the end of the movie. So that was the idea. But, you know, yeah, it still works very well the way it is. Now, this yeah, is I great how capable she is. She she's improvising, grabs that can of spray. She's really kicking some ass right here. She well, really wanted to laugh during this, you know, and my my. The only problem I have with this sequence is it's really neat. All the elements work together well. Had it been a, a darker bathroom with maybe light coming in through a window, it might have been scarier because yeah. everything's too, too lit. But that would be my only you know, change maybe if I was to redo it. 
this kind of reminds me of Gremlins, where uh, near the end of the movie, the mom ends up taking out four out of six of the Gremlins all on her own, and you know, it's just like Here's this. the best Debbie. joke of the movie. This is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> And Suzanne, you banged your head on a couple of takes, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, the, fire, the, the fireman. I love that. That's great. Well, you see, and if, 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 uh, if you haven't seen the deleted sequence in the tent in the, in, in the beginning of the film, um, Suzanne talks about, Debbie talks about her fear of clowns and where it came from. And he lifted me up and, you know, my parents didn't do anything. And that leering face, we recreated that, her nightmare in mm -hmm. that sequence where he picked her up and her nightmare was being relived. Mm. Wow. It loses, loses the meaning because you, they cut out a revelation in the beginning. And this scene, the whole scene with the ice cream truck like this, this is from the Three Stooges. Their, their uh, short called Pop Goes the Weasel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an exact lift and, and, uh, and it has the same kind of funniness to it. I don't know, I, I love that. <laughs> Where they can't turn off the No, no, remember what the music? curly. Curly yeah. could only box when he heard Pop Goes the Weasel. The weasel. And they right, the radio, that's right. And then they, they find, Larry finds this truck that plays Pop Goes the Weasel and he's driving down the road trying to get to the boxing <laughs> ring and he breaks through the wall, just like we did in Killer Clowns. Right. And it goes faster, every, the faster he goes, the faster the song goes. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, this is supposed to be a very suspenseful chase and we're playing Pop Goes the Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just a part of because I remember Stephen at, at some point you were gonna you were gonna cut it out and you were saying is it funnier and I, I said yes one hundred percent funnier with the music <laughs> oh yeah yeah oh absolutely definitely you know those um, that was a really cool scene to shoot with um, in the bathroom because you guys explained how everything worked for me. And it was it was just fascinating watching you guys work and, and talk about everything. And actually the teeth really hurt when it bit me so it worked. They were sharp. I'll never forget that, it hurt. I was like. <laughs> it was, it was De Deborah Galvez puppeteered them in, in Santa Cruz. And then I did it when we did the pickups, completed the sequence in our studio. It was to help motivate you. No, it was awesome. It was fascinating. All of this was so cool to do. It wouldn't let us wreck the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the Trinity Brothers are in a, a different movie entirely. Yeah, they're like in a different uh, uh, reality with their dialogue and the way they reacted to things. Oh, they could yeah. have their own spin-off, seeing what else they were up to that night. <laughs> you know, I've been seeing Michael Siegel lately in, in uh, credit card commercials. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, yeah. he does um, theater, uh, mostly in Europe, in England, he lives and, in England uh, yeah. but he does commercials also. Oh, this is a really great scene. Boy, that we got such great a great look from that amusement park. And he, I, what a great character course. actor this yeah. guy is. Oh, this is David Peel. He was fantastic. He did yeah. everything oh, right. Great look. The He's line, got the mustache. He got everything going. What are you going to do with those pies, boys? Perfect delivery. Perfect. I just love the way the mustache, the whole look. You guys just got him down. Well, he was supposed to look like our Uncle John Bellotti. <laughs> <laughs> is, they'll say that this is stupid dialogue. This is the perfect question. No, that's what makes it work. A perfect question. <laughs> it's a classic I mean, it's line. such a meme this thing has become a meme you know there's no it's not shorty tiny. that's tiny. tiny yes you don't ask a question if you don't if you don't know what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks the first pie missed yeah. Okay, wait a minute. How did you throw those pies? With a catapult or what? We had 20 people with pies. Okay. One tin with uh, the straps tied onto the glued onto the back of the tin so that just the pie would go and not the tin. Yeah. Do you see the teeth missing in the front? The first take, the clown went through and knocked the teeth out. <laughs> too tall. Oh, no kidding. So it's, it's got to it, it's gotta go to the dentist. And that was just a button on the on the gag, the cherry. 
and Suzanne, when you when you had your um, part in Seinfeld uh, with poppies and the not eating the pie, did pe were people making jokes connecting killer clowns to this or something? <laughs> your character didn't want the pie. <laughs> That's um, you know, I when I go to conventions, sometimes people will bring it up. Very <laughs> rarely, but they do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so gross to me because that's the that's the night watchman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, mm. yeah, Suzanne, have Good you gotten flavor. any flack like when you were on Seinfeld? Any any flack from being in this movie? What, what's the response been in your career? No, no, no. Actually, you know, Killer Clowns has been probably, I mean, Seinfeld too, right? But um, Killer Clowns has been one of the it's really been one of the best experiences. Gosh, good um, it was super fun to go to Santa Cruz for two months and, and work with all you guys and be on set like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, it just is something that it's like a family almost. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't say it other than that. People, it makes people so happy, not just one generation, but two, three generations of families. Mm -hmm watch this movie and love this movie. And it gives me great joy to know that we made something like this and it, and it makes so many people happy. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm happy too. Yeah, you're right, it, it's, it's a, a fun film. It's something you can share with your family at, at one, yeah. in, 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 uh, Well, there's so many generations. There's now, there's now people that originally saw it are now Great grandparents, uh, you know, I don't know. There's what grandparents, we like little kids. On, on that... Conventions, you know, kids who, you know, the people come to us. Oh, my dad turned me on to this movie when I was five, and now I'm turning my kid on to it. Yeah. So we, right. we bridge like three generations. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I met kids, you know, five years ago that were seven. You know, now they're twelve. They're, get, they're, just, everyone's growing and it's like they're spreading it spreading the word amongst their friends there's something about the movie that's weird enough quirky enough imaginative enough that it's like it, it, it's a, it's a wonderful experience that everyone wants to share yes yeah, so for me killer clowns is right up there with my seinfelds that i did and weird science i mean those would be my three that well i'm serious that really touch people and move them and um make them happy makes them happy and it makes you happy then mm -hmm. that you gave that got to experience it and then also share it with so many people right yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. the movie the blob that you know Stephen based you know the, the opening of the film on you know it was one of my favorite films it's a perfect little film by uh uh but uh john uh, john ha harris um jack harris jack harris, he jack. Jack harris. and uh the thing is steve mcqueen they introduced Steve McQueen, you know, new talent. Mm -hmm. and we heard from his son. We took a meeting with Steve McQueen's son and we told Dad him. Steve McQueen auditioned for Killer Clowns. Oh, okay. Even that's how we met him. And yeah. we said, this movie is based on that. We love that. That's one of our favorite movies. He said, my dad hated and regretted oh. doing that film his whole career. Ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You would think that by that time it wouldn't matter. You would be able to laugh. About it. I guess some people are very uh, sensitive about certain things that they've been in. Maybe it was a bad experience, not the movie itself. I wonder. Maybe the experience yeah, you don't know. working on it was really right. uh, traumatic. So I mean, like, who would have thought, you know, that we do this film and then we end up at Universal? Mm. Yeah. Who would have thunk it? I mean, yeah. No, no, it's just a movie that we would like to go see, really. Well, that was the genesis of it. I think we just made something that we wanted to see because we love this genre. And I think it shows. I think what we produced together shows that kind of affection. It's, uh, it's not campy. It's not a farce. It's a genuine homage to something we love. Yeah, it's very frustrating to me to, to look back and go, if, you know, Trans World was into franchising their properties like New Line, like Bob Shea at New Line. Right. How different. Would, oh yeah had eight sequels and tv series and stuff you know it would have been totally different yeah there would Bob be Shea, rides Bob, it Shea, probably... Bob Shea didn't like the movie <laughs> yeah Bob Shea didn't, Bob like, Bob it. didn't like the movie but you know what? what had we made it with with Bob he would have changed it no 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 what he what he, what he said was because I was looking for directing gigs later on he said he didn't really like it but 
we could we should talk to him, but he didn't think you could mix horror and comedy. comedy yeah. he, did, he did one movie previously that was a horror comedy and it bombed. And I think in his mind, it was a mix that didn't work. It had to be one genre or the other. And yeah, in so, some cases, he's right. Very few films. Abbott Costello. My, my, Abbott, Costello, Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein, the perfect blend of- No, no but, but, but that's different. That's an Abbott Costello movie. And that we, it was in their heyday. So it's not really a horror movie. That was an Abbott Costello. But if you look at the modern day ones, uh, American Werewolf in London. Men in Black. Uh, and Men in Black. It, it, but, yeah, with anything previously- Oh, oh even Reanimator re re has definitely comic elements to it. Yeah, yeah. So but there were very few though. And I think they didn't do as well as what Shay thought they should do. Well, it's a very it's it's very hard to pull it off, and you guys pulled it off. I think as a concept from scratch, probably for someone like Shay, it's like, well, you know that that's hard to pull off. Not not everyone can do it. <laughs> but what, what, what is what has Bob Shay done anyway? Um, it, you know, it, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, uh, what the, the 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 trilogy of the rings? What? The... <laughs> well, it's interesting though. We didn't we didn't set out to make a comedy. It just turned out that way. Right. Right. <laughs> I love that scene where they like hop in between the cotton candy pots like they're really hidden. <laughs> yeah, like no one will notice us. We'll blend in. <laughs> that was so funny. Well, if they, if they believe it, it works. Yes. <laughs> and it did though, because they did. Yeah, yeah. I love the straws too, how they drank the blood. It was so awesome. That was a specially made straw by Gene Rizzardi. He had to take a plexiglass tubing and, and, and put two or three lengths together and heat it with something inside so it wouldn't collapse when he made the curls. It was a very meticulous thing and he pulled it off and it's a perfect prop. Who has that prop now? Oh, who knows? But it's interesting what you're seeing is sort of like a malfunction. Uh, the first time we ran the fluid through the straw, it was all clear and you didn't see any kind of a flow. Then I don't know how it happened. We got bubbles in the line. And when you had bubbles, you were able to, for the first time to see the flow of the liquid through the straw, which made the whole gag work. Oh, great. And this was interesting. This, this scene right here, when Grant finally realizes that Debbie, <laughs> that Debbie is with Dave. And I don't think, I wish Grant was here because I don't think Grant really figured it out until we actually were acting in the moment. Right. He doesn't know how to react because I think it first dawned on him. And I think his reaction is pretty, pretty perfect. It's like, what, what am I supposed to do here? Says, Debbie, <laughs> darling, baby, or whatever. He goes Sweetheart. for Debbie and she goes for Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Which was the plan all along. You see that? He felt like, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now he's out of the picture. Well, really, the Mike the Bachelor <laughs> character is the dumb blonde in the in the movie. So she is going. <laughs> so Debbie, Debbie is going one. for stability. Debbie is going <laughs> for stability. Especially with all these clowns going around. Yeah. And what a dig. What kind of a dig is that? It was perfect. I guess she goes for laughs, not stability. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but now she's she, now she's coming around. He's brought her back. Yeah, the gun. The, the bullet must have hit something else on the way out, I'm thinking, in that uh -huh. room. Oh, this is great. And this, this what studio was this, are the, were these sets built at? This is built in a warehouse in uh, Santa Cruz. Oh, seriously? So you didn't, Brian, you didn't shoot all the interiors warehouse. down here? That was no. a blank, blank warehouse space. Yeah. We, we did some pickups um, in our studio, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, all this was shot up in, on location. Oh, that's fascinating. And that's Mark Sullivan, masterpiece, mad painting. The full cocoon room. Right. That's what uh, Edward Kyoto is in right now. And then that was my favorite line in, in the movie. We can't leave now. There still might be people alive in these cocoons. Yeah. That's, that's not a corny line. No. They're in a coma. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. He's a cop. He's looking out for everyone. But of course, yes. they aren't that explosion happens i guess we can assume what happens to all those cocoons yeah mike and debbie getting the hell out of that he's concerned about the people in the cocoons and he slides down with one arm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. while one. holding a shotgun Busted his balls on that <laughs> remember the the, the pole shredded the gloves yeah oh how about this suzanne remember this all the balloons were popping Oh, and that's it. But your, your line, Suzanne, 
Oh no, no, he's gonna put me in a balloon again. <laughs> and then I'm in all those balloons. That's a forced perspective shot. Those are miniatures in the foreground. Great work done by Gene Warren in Fantasy Two. That's great. Now, if that was Killer Clown, there should have been spikes on those things. Uh. We wanted to show one of the clowns go down straight down to that mo that monster. <laughs> Yeah, so many things we didn't realize. That's what's so great. There's so many parts of the ship that we haven't explored, like what's underneath that monster and what else is there hiding oh, around? Oh, yeah. And when you think how te technologically advanced the, the technology is, they, they can, they can uh, basically uh, and they can manipulate gravity and space. Where you notice how the design, as we got deeper into the clown spaceship, there was less <laughs> structure. There's more things hanging in space. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look at this now, we could have made this scarier that the mouth could have opened and closed and they had a time running out before the mouth closed. See, we now could have- you tell me. Bit, you know? <laughs> I look at this now and I see, how could I tweak it a little differently? I love this set. That's my favorite set in the movie. This would be a great for a go-go party, like go-go dancers dancing on <laughs> the... Yeah, so Afterwards, this... everyone gets together and rocks out. This was four slides on. Oh, I got a, I got a little bit of trivia. This music right here, uh, uh, about a year or so before, was the for the I had composed for the trailer of one of the Saturday, um, one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies. I think number four. <laughs> uh, but he he thought it was too too visceral or something like that, and and we ended up doing something that sounded like it was from a horror movie from nineteen seventy nine. But that's it worked perfect here. It worked. This is a perfect. this is a beautifully realized scene. I really like this scene. We built up nicely. We had that crane shot as you're climbing up. Really beautiful. All those and then, colors. And then we wanted to actually break through with the real truck. We didn't do it. That's a miniature. <laughs> and then that's the real truck. Boy, I can't believe we pulled this off. I was we so about, we were about to do it, but then we just we knew we wouldn't make the night. So Gene happened to Gene Warren. Having to be on set that night, and uh, we said, "No, he said, no, we'll do this. We'll do this in a, as a miniature, make yeah. your night, just another." Just and this work. is some of the best clown performances. This is uh, a lot of those clips later on. Uh, uh, <laughs> during the live shoot, I don't think the guys were familiar enough with the puppets to really get a good performance, and we didn't shoot very much, knowing that we'd shoot them later on. And those shots looked pretty good. Those were amazing. Yeah, when they were working, they they, they did look pretty good. And this is the other improv line that uh, Paul Terenzi made up. Pete Lacazzi says, we, we get out of the truck. We can't, it's rented. Very funny line. <laughs> and, and he made was, it up. Yeah, the, the Terenzi brothers, they were characters that were out of the moment. They were just looking to get laid the whole yes. movie. They didn't, have, they didn't care about anything else. And this is from The Wizard of Oz, of course. The great and powerful Oz. Uh, again, we borrow from the best. <laughs> Uh, it's stealing from the best. <laughs> no, we, we we gave it back, which is oh awesome. good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great shot. And gosh, um, what actor was... did you did you convince to get into that costume to do this scene? Who could have possibly had the guts to be Clownzilla? Well, we, we, we couldn't pay anybody, so. Charlie raised his hand. <laughs> we didn't want to. We didn't. We didn't have the the budget to pay. And you know what? It was 115 degrees outside. Wow. And, oh. You know, and, and we we were in the tent, so it was 150 15 degrees in the tent, and I was in the suit. I was right. sweating from the second I got in there. I didn't want to have somebody in there saying, "Get me out," and we had to undress them and stuff. So I just I just did it and said, "Let's just do this thing." It was really uncomfortable. Yeah, sensory deprivation, except the sweat dripping down your head and you couldn't clear it, you know? So yeah, it was a tough, it was a tough one. And no, that made you more enraged. No, it was really great though. I mean, it, it, it pulled it off the way you grabbed it, where you smashed it, even though there was a Makita screw sticking up. Oh, towards yeah. Towards your hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was pounding was the, the ice cream truck and I was pounding it. I had to do it really fast because it was shooting it, at, you know, at a uh, high frame rate. So I had to do it really fast. And I knew a, a screw went right through my hand. Wow. Going. <laughs> that, is, that is filmmaking. Look at this. What a, that's a great monster. Yeah. 
Yeah, Gene Warren. You could do a whole movie on Clownzilla, in my opinion. And these are simple perspective shots. We had uh, the head in the in the foreground. We're shooting from a high angle over the head to Dave on the ground. It was a uh, simple. Um, in the camera, practical special effects. Yeah, yeah and, and I, think, effects. I think the Terenzi brothers could have survived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's truck. And once again, Dave, still the hero. You know, you guys get out of here. I'll, I'll take care of this. Yeah, yeah, he's a big hero. People ask me, how did the Terenzi brothers survive? I said, because of the Terenzi brothers. That's why. Because <laughs> it says so in the script. <laughs> yeah. Terenzi brothers always survived, but Dave, not so much. <laughs> They were supposed to die in the original version. So the actual size of the clownzilla head is how how big? It was about twenty four inches, you know, from oh, front okay. to back. Yeah, it was the biggest clown head. Right. But they were all pretty big because we made them oversized. You know, the, the the conceit of the film was to make the clown so big that adults would feel like children standing next to them. Right. And you guys made another giant clown, didn't you, for um, Universal Studios for their Ghostbusters uh, show? Yeah, Char Charlie designed oh. uh, uh, the, the, the ghost creatures for uh, the Ghostbusters event, uh, ride in Jackson Orlando. Park. And I yeah. think it was, uh, you, you did a clown. Uh, oh, a that was for, uh, yeah, uh, Landmark Entertainment, you know, uh, Gary Goddard and Tony. Um, and I designed the ghost and they made them full size. We made, I made one of them was a giant clown because they were fans of killer clowns. I said, oh, make a giant clown ghost. And I made a taxi cab ghost, a convict ghost with a striped black and white striped suit. I made a cabbie. I made a homeless woman in a shopping cart ghost. Wow. I made some demon ghosts. And they, they made them full size. And it's, if you go on, on YouTube, you can see it. You know, they still run the, uh, the universal. It's no longer in existence. They took it down. But the mm -hmm. videos of it on YouTube are pretty amazing. It's a pretty neat ride. Oh, look. I mean, it's a show, not it's, a ride. Yeah. It's Dave. He's alive. <laughs> now, all the people that played the police officers, those are people that live in the town? Yeah, that's the town. But this sequence here, that's done in a parking lot in Van Nuys. We shot this ending oh, cool. after we did an edit. Our executive producer thought that having Dave die at the end was kind of a bummer ending for a film like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think he was right. So we shot this ending where everybody comes back and it's a nice, happy, funny ending. And how come you couldn't bring back John Vernon? <laughs> he was a bad guy. Oh, okay. These are our heroes. These are, okay. This is our cast. Okay. <laughs> but, even, but even at the time, we, much of, we agree now with that decision. It kind of, no, we wanted to do it. So we, we had to put a a little bit of a joke at the end. We right. The last word. Yes, and how are those pies, Suzanne? <laughs> you know what? I missed. I I threw I threw the pie at Suzanne, and I missed you. I missed. I didn't uh, hit you on your forehead. I hit you sort of lower. She left out. A one shot yeah. thing. I know, Suzanne, you said that you didn't know what the ending was going to be. We didn't tell you that we were going to throw pies. We were afraid you wouldn't show up. <laughs> of course I would have, but that was funny. I got some of Dave's pie, so it worked out fine. I got <laughs> Plenty to share. And of course, it ends with the Dickies theme song again. That's what I also loved awesome. about its connection with the Blob. The Blob, they had their hit song, like the Blob Twist or something. And you, you, you guys got the Dickies on board. How did the Dickies come on board? It was Burt Bacharach did the Blob thing. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah. No, yeah. Actually, our, our music supervisor um, had a relationship okay. with their record company and pitched them the stuff. Uh, the movie, this the with the like just like the one liner of it, and then they uh, Stan went off and and wrote the song, and then they played a demo for us, and we loved it. We had like zero input; um, they just nailed it. Yeah. My favorite line from that song that uh, Stuart Phillips, uh, uh, Leonard Phillips, wrote it. Leonard, you're right. But, um, there's cotton candy everywhere, says a polka dotted man with a stock of jacaranda. Isn't that brilliant? That's such metaphor. I think it's great. And they brought yeah. in a whole different crowd. We knew we had the monster movie horror fans, but yeah. those guys brought in their fan base, which is a completely different group of people. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, and it was just, it, it made it the success it is. They totally embraced it. Totally embraced it. It's one of those uh, collaborative efforts. So now the movie's over. Is there anybody still watching? Well, yeah, there is. There's, there's all kinds of questions. I mean, they're like long dissertation style questions. I don't even know. Was there any backstory on Clownzilla? Any reason why he kept hiding, hidden like a puppet? Killer seems to be more the, a lead than Clownzilla. So I was curious about this. This is from um, Ira Norinio. You know what? We grew up with monster movies. You get, you build up, you have good sequence, you build mm -hmm. up to an exciting climax. Mm -hmm. We always want to end with a big monster, right? Right. Ex you have to, exactly. You, you have to top what you've done previously. So we had to have a big monster. And yeah. the idea was that this is the boss. Like in a video game, you've got the boss at the end that you have to fight. That's mm -hmm. pretty much what it was. And we had an idea that there was a tiny, tiny little clown up on top actually manipulating the strings because Clownzilla originally was a marionette. Wow. It's problematic for us to shoot Charlie in a suit with strings, so we chopped them off and we kind yeah. of, uh, not that we would have ever shown the little clown, but that was kind of like a little bit of a backstory for Clownzilla. And somebody asked um, uh, what the decision making was for, uh, they said that like uh, usually you don't get such great closure like this movie where the cops show up and are witness that there were killer clowns. You know, it's not a big mystery. There's witnesses, police. Yeah, but who's who's going to believe them? That's so who's, stupid. Yeah. No cell phones. No, no, nothing like that. <laughs> there's, no, there's no evidence. It blew up completely, destroyed. So there's going to be a flashy thing to make them all forget anyway. So, oh, but that's that's the thing because you know what? In today with the phones. If, if, to do a sequel now with cell phones and everybody videotaping everything, we have to come up with a device that the clowns have that you can't record them or that there's a, a flashy device kind no, of- No, 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 no. What happens is whenever they take, when they take a picture of you, that turns into a TikTok and it looks like it's something kind of free, something that somebody made. So they said, oh, this is a TikTok. That's a device. That's a, that's a reasonable device that the clowns use to- keep deceiving because once everybody's afraid of clowns, the gag is over. The sequels are over. We have to keep, you know, people, un you know, unknowingly approaching clowns because once they know clowns are invading and clowns are deadly, then the franchise stops. The franchise that doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed the creative process of the Kyoto Brothers. <laughs> No, yeah, amazing. See, that's why people love to tune into these things because over this past hour, you know, people are saying like, wow, it's amazing how many uh, memories, you you know, all, all these things you guys have locked up in your noggin still from all the way back then. Right. And, and what I love is, you know, all of you guys asking each other questions, you know, you weren't all involved with the exact same stuff. And that's how these amazing ideas and memories bubble back up for the audience and everyone's really enjoying it. Well, you know, earlier this year, I, I had um, was working with uh, Funko Pop Hollywood to have an event at their Hollywood store, and uh, that can still happen. It'll probably be sometime next year when all this blows over. But um, I think they they're, they're going to have to they're going to have to block off the street. <laughs> They're gonna have to block off Hollywood Boulevard because I think yeah, the, place the, will be the Funko toys have turned out great. They look great. I just wish they had listened to when they actually they asked to, for clarification. MGM ran the names by me, and I I tried to clarify it that these are what the fans came up with, but this is what we actually call them on set. But I right. guess the fan names have taken root, um, so that's what they decided to go with. Well, fans pointed out to me that the Funko Pop Spike is called Spiky not spike so already, there was never a spike in our you know what we call them was what did you call it? slim slim gotcha yeah, yeah well what isn't it amazing how th things like this will happen where the you know the audience isn't very clear on some of the names but collectively they they create they create them they just well, yeah, it's where rudy came from i think it's probably from like the clown dialect that uh, chuck and dave nichols came up with i think one of them in passing kind of says something that sounds like Rudy and maybe they misinterpreted it as like oh, not that yeah. clown name by name. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah, it, and you know, you, you create something, you put it out there, then you you kind of lose the authorship of it. I mean it takes mm -hmm. on a life of its own.
Yeah, and big shout out again to Chuck. He was only here for a short time, but I really yeah. love what he did with the clown language. It's very unnatural to humans to hear, and it works perfectly for what you guys were putting together. Well, I have his sound effects track separate, and it's amazing, like when you're in the spaceship and there's all the bubbling and mechanical and goofy sounds that go on, it just like they're all surrounding you. It's really very innovative. Yeah, Chuck is really talented. He's got a really creative approach to all of these things. He was able to really capture the kind of, you know, sci-fi comedy we wanted. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Great. And uh, Mike Martinez uh, says he wants to give a shout out to Suzanne for doing just about all of her own stunts. Uh, <laughs> does it all. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's really, you know, the, the movie, you know, it was, it was our first, actually, it's our only movie to date. Yeah, our first and only movie. <laughs> now, someone in here wanted, wanted us to wish them happy birthday. I, I kind of lost them. But whoever that person was, we all wish you a great happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. First day of International Clown Week, the birthday. <laughs> that That right. is something special. <laughs> well, I'm staying inside if it's International Clown Week. I just Same have to go here. out there, man. <laughs> I wonder, have, have, you, have you guys gotten any um, official notice from the clown community that they have rancor toward you for your work? Just one. Seriously? <laughs> one person or one, one organization? One yeah, I mean, again, it was actually before the movie was done, I was out scouting clown cars and this guy had one. Uh -huh. And um, he, he I kind of told him what the movie was about. And he said, aren't you worried that the kitties might get the wrong idea? I said, no freak. <laughs> <laughs> the kitties are already on to you. Yeah, the kitties are already on to you, exactly. No, but actually, most of them, actually, just about every other clown we've met really dig the movie. They, oh, that's they, good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. We it's wouldn't a, want to make enemies with the clown community. <laughs> I think we even got ridiculous. mentioned in the TV series Baskets. Because uh, he, he, he said, you know, it's tough doing clowning these days considering there are movies like Killer Clowns, but he didn't say from outer space. They probably couldn't get clearance from MGM or something like oh, that. Oh, probably not. That, that, that pop culture um, references of, you know, that, that's on one of the- In Chucky, two. yeah. Well, that's we've an been, MGM project. We've been uh, answers on Jeopardy, some other game shows. Uh, I mean, you had your one of your cues on uh, Stranger Things this past that's week. right. No, three. It was like in the first act. Yeah, I was amazed. I mean, I go, I, I just said thank you. I had no idea. I don't know what the reasoning behind using it was, but thank you. Oh, I like it, <laughs> Adam yeah. Goldberg. If you're watching, get get these guys on uh on the Goldbergs, right? They've been they've been covering all the everything '80s, so love oh, cool. to see you on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, guys, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, so uh, we're going to wrap this up now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just going to say, it's about that time, 6 o'clock right now. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for joining you. Just before we sign off, I, I want to, of course, give a special shout out to the Chiotas. I don't have a Killer Clown shirt, but I do have um, Ernest Scared Stupid. Uh, <laughs> got this from Cavity Colors. Uh, love that movie. Love that troll you made. That was one of the most frightening things I'd ever seen and one of the best uh, Halloween movies and uh, bless Jim Varney, he was great. Uh, but without any further ado, we'll go ahead and do our sign off right now. Uh, thank you everybody at home for joining us this evening for our special watch party of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Thank you, John Nassari. Thank you, Edward Chiodo. Thank you, Stephen Chiodo. Thank you, Charles Chiodo. Thank you, Suzanne Snyder. And as well to you, Grant Kramer for joining us. And uh, you know, Chuck everybody- Serino. Chuck Serino, um, and all the fans. See. Josh McKillen, you know, with uh, Dread Central for helping spread the word. Uh, and of course, uh, the Dead Meat podcast, uh, James Janice and uh, Chelsea Rebecca, they were supposed to be on this uh, live stream with us, but unfortunately they weren't able to make it. We'll do something else with them uh, in the near future. Thank you everybody for joining us. Remember, please go down to the link down below to give to the Frida Cinema, our favorite nonprofit um, that we've been doing many events at and we hopefully will be able to do some more in the future when everything is safe. If you go down to the link, give today. Uh, anyways, have a great weekend everybody. Happy International Clown Week and take it easy.
All right, thank Take you. care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good to Bye. see you guys. Bye. Bye. Be safe. And congratulations. Thank you.